Hello and welcome to Hardware Husky. Today we'll be unboxing and benchmarking the Ryzen 7 5800X. Before we begin, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It would help me out a lot and I would greatly appreciate it. Let's look at the specs of the Ryzen 7 5800X. It's an 8 core, 16 thread processor that supports PCIe Gen 4 as a 3.8 GHz base clock with a 4.7 GHz boost clock. The processor has a 36 MB total cache on board. On to the unboxing. This is a full retail unit, the same as what you will be able to buy in the shop because I purchased this in the shop today. And let's slice it open and take it out. Okay, there looks there seems to be a lot of cardboard inside where the fan probably would have been. It's a bit of waste, but oh well. What else we got inside there? We have seven sticker, the processor in a protective casing. We have installation instructions. Also, a little important notice reminding you to update the BIOS. And here's the process itself. So AMD Ryzen 5800X. Following the important notice, a uh, little bit of card. Let's upgrade the motherboard BIOS. So go over to your motherboard manufacturer's website and obviously look for the latest motherboard that has the Ajisa Combo V2. This one's the 1.100C, but you can use the combo version 2 1.081, depending on how fast your manufacturer's updated their BIOS page. Installing is the same as any other AM4 processor. You lift up the lever, line up the arrows, put the processor in, stick the lever back down, done. Now that the processor is all installed correctly, let's go on to the test system. The test system will be running the Ryzen 3800X or the 5800X Corsair H150i RGB Platinum 280mm liquid cooler. The motherboard is a Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra. It will be running 16 gigabytes of 3600CL18 RAM. The graphics card is MSI 1080 Ti Gaming X and all games are loaded on a crucial P1 1TB NVMe SSD. As the graphics card is only a 1080 Ti, all graphics settings have been adjusted so that the CPU is the one that struggles, not the GPU. On Cinebench R15, the 3800X scored 209 single core and 2165 on multi core. The 5800X scored 263 single core and 2507 multi core. That's a 25.8% increase on single core and a 15.8% increase on multi core. For Cinebench R20, the 3800X scored 509 single core and 4970 multi core. The 5800X scored 623 single core and 5838 multi core. That's a 22.4% increase single core and 17.5% increase on multi core. The 10900K scores 551 single core and 6430 on multi core. The Ryzen 5800X has a 13.1% increase on single core over the 10900K. The first game benchmark we have is Assassin's Creed Odyssey where the 3800X scored an average FPS of 93.7 and a 1% low of 51.8. The 5800X scored an average FPS of 106 and a 1% low of 66.4. This gives an average FPS increase of 13.1%. The next game benchmark we have is Tom Clancy The Division 2. The 3800X scored an average FPS of 141.6 with a 1% low of 96.1. The 5800X had an average FPS of 149.7 with a 1% low of 108.1. This gave an average FPS increase of 5.7%.
The next game we have is Borderlands 3 with a 3800x scored, an average FPS of 103.4 with a 1% low of 89.8. The 5800x had an average FPS of 120.1 with a 1% low of 89.9. That is an average FPS increase of 16.2%. Next up we have 3D Mark Time Spy where the 3800X scored 9,987, where the 5800X scored 10,963. That is a CPU score increase of 9.8%. Now we have World War Z, where the 3800 had an average FPS of 206.2, with a 1% low of 150.3. The 5800X had an average FPS of 249 and a 1% low of 183. This is an average FPS increase of 20.8%. Here we have Final Fantasy 15, where the 3800X scored an average FPS of 140 and a 1% low of 85.5. The 5800X had an average FPS of 148.2 and a 1% low of 103.7. This is an average FPS increase of 5.9%. On to the last benchmark, Horizon Zero Dawn, where the 3800 scored an average FPS of 94.9 and a 1% low of 58.5. The 5800X had an average FPS of 106.9 with a 1% low of 62.4. This is an average FPS increase of 12.6%. So that's it for all the benchmarks. I would have liked to compare it with the 10700K but I don't have that process or motherboard to test it so I only compared it to the 3800X which is the direct, uh, well the generation model before and what have I seen from all these tests? Well <laughs> there's definitely an increase in performance all around the board, single core, IPC, definitely improved in games. I have noticed Windows loads a lot quicker and all around generally more responsive. I would have liked to test temperatures but none of my software that I used picks up the uh, temperature diode on the processor I'm guessing where it's so new. It's definitely an amazing processor but is it worth the extra $50 over its previous generation? Well that's kind of hard to say really because you expect a performance increase over its previous generation but then it's quite a big one this time so well I definitely like it would I recommend it over 3800x yes if you run high FPS gaming or you do a lot of productivity I would definitely recommend it then no if you don't run high FPS or have a high-end graphics card and don't do productivity all in all, I would definitely go for it if you're buying new. AMD have softened the $50 kick to the nuts with a free copy of Far Cry 6 to 5950X, 5900X and 5800X purchases. But the 5600X is not included. That's it for the unboxing and benchmarking of the Ryzen 7 5800X. I know it was a bit rushed and I didn't get all the benchmarks in I wanted to do, but I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible, where I've only just got it on release day. Um, if you've got any questions about it, I'll try and answer them. If we have any specific tests and I've got the software, I'll try and get you the numbers. Just stick a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. I hope you enjoyed watching this and found it useful. Like it if you like the video, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it and I hope I'll see you again.